welcome to another video with Blocks Builder. And in this video, we're going to take a quick look at forms. Um, and when I say a quick look, hopefully this video won't be too long because there's a bunch of stuff to cover. So uh, this video was inspired by a form that I had to do for a client recently, and I thought that would make a good tutorial. Um, as you know, as many of you know, um, Blocks does give us uh, very basic form elements. And a lot of people just kind of keep to this when they when they do their websites with just name, email, messages, um, <clears throat> and an opt-in and out box usually. So we're going to um, look at how we can structure some of our input fields and make it a little bit more fancier and user-friendly for um, people interacting on our websites. So I'm going to go ahead and build a form that was really close to um, the one I did for my client, very similar. And show you some of the things that I did for my client. First thing I do when I put a form in though is I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to call that form and it's a it's a it's a form for hierages of rooms in the building. So I'm just going to call it form hire. The other thing I like to do is I like to give my forms a custom class, which means I can target styling different elements within the form and it won't affect the rest of my website. For example, I'm going to put some headings in here, some H4 tags, but I don't want to change the styling of the H4 tags across my site, just the ones that are in my form. So I'm going to call this um, custom form. Pretty exciting. You can call it whatever you like. So I'm just going to speed this up as I'm going to build out the bare bones for this form. Oh, one other thing I want to mention is when you're adding different new elements into a form, it's a really good idea to make sure that you're selecting the form groups on the left hand side in the layer tree. Uh, it just keeps it nice and tidy, keeps it easy, it stops inputs being nested into other inputs and uh, just makes it really easy to edit and change things later on. Okay, so make use of the layer tree to select items to add more items into your form. Alright, I'm going to get started. Okay, here we have our basic form um, structured and complete. We have a few different sections here. We have our contact details of name, phone, email, event details, which we're going to have our, our date selector a from and to time, um, some information, a, a text box here for event details, um, spaces that they can choose to hire, front hall, back hall, cafe, outside deck, and additional information. And actually, I have, when I've gone and built that, I have put the wrong field there. So let's go and quickly change that right now and it should have been a text area. Um, this points out actually something interesting is um, interesting as um, I had a row here as you can see and when I added another text element, an input element below it, it automatically put it in a row which I don't want to do. So um, that looks like a bit of a bug. So I'm going to drag my form group below my row there, and I'm going to delete that row I don't want. Okay, so now we have the structure of our site, contact details, event details, our spaces to hire, an additional information box, and a submit button. The first thing I'm going to do is do some basic styling over the whole form. And um, first thing I'm going to do is target our H4 tags for our uh, section headers. And of course, if you remember, I used um, a class for our entire form called custom form, and I'm going to use that to target our H4 elements. So custom form space H4, keep our spaces intact. And as I said, the reason why I do this is so that it doesn't affect or I'm not restyling any H4 elements across our whole site. I'm going to make that 1.4 rims. Let's make that a nice solid black. And I'm going to make them bold. Of course, you could fluff around with all the text typography if you wanted to. I'm going to keep it very simple in this case. I'm going to change uh, the top margin 
to 1.5 rims and the bottom margin to a 0 0.75 yep that'll do okay <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is I want to change the um, the the styling of our input box border and uh, in Safari you can actually do an inspection of that element and you'll see that there's a class here called form control and we can use that class there to style our box so I'm just gonna make another class called form control and I can set our border to a solid I'm gonna make it two pixels make it solid black and in my case I'm gonna have zero radius actually we can make that one pixel might be a bit nicer there's lots of cool things you can do here though uh, you could use the dotted lines I mean that does kind of look cool depending on your design of your um, your site the finer dots can be quite neat of course changing size you can um, set all the borders to zero and just uh, set a width for the bottom one which can look pretty cool as well kind of more minimalist type of form but in my case in this situation uh, we're going to have a width of one pixel right around it's going to be a solid line with no radiuses cool So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and we're going to hide all of these labels and put placeholder text in our fields and if we're going to hide the labels you really want to put placeholder text so people know what information needs to be in those fields. So as I do that I'm going to go through each of the field from the top down and I'm also going to set the um, required value of the fields as required funny enough. So I'm going to use the visibility option on the right hand panel with the label selected and use the, um, the I symbol to remove it from all breakpoints. I'm going to check that our name field is required and I'm going to put a placeholder text of full name. Hide our um, phone label. Placeholder. Working my way down, it's required. Now these three here, I'm going to actually keep the labels here and I'm going to set the requirement to required. Event details, let's hide the label for that one. Make sure that's set to required. Spaces and down here additional information, hide the label. Uh, put um, some additional information actually we're going to do that for our event details here we're going to need some placeholder text aren't we so we've got our label hidden and then we're going to put some placeholder text um, tell us about your event and the additional information box down here um, What else would you like to tell us okay let's have a quick look so we've got the form is staying to our uh, form here we've got our um, basic information Ooh, um, I'm missing some placeholder text on our email input here gonna put that excellent <clears throat> one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna style the color of our placeholder text here now if you remember we used a, 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 a class called form control to style our form here our form um, our input field and uh, we can use form control and use a pseudo called placeholder to style our placeholder text so I'm going to make another class called form control uh, a double semicolon and then placeholder And now we can style our text in here and we could make it solid black or we could make it blue 
whatever color really suits your design. I'm going to actually use this dark blue here. So it's just off black and it kind of suits, uh, kind of suited the design of the site, our client site. Cool. And this doesn't change the color of the text when your client, when your um, visitor writes into the boxes. Okay, next thing we're going to do is uh, change the labels. We'll style the labels that are above our, our input boxes here. If we come back to Safari, refresh the page, and use our inspector tool, we'll be able to see that the class being used here is called Form Label. So we can use that class to style our form labels here. So I'm going to make the text a solid black color. I'm going to make it um, small, slightly smaller text, maybe 0 0.8 0 .8 rims. Make that capitals, and I'm going to make that bold. <clears throat> nice. Cool. Starting to look good. Right, next thing we want to do is actually we want to tidy up the spacing around our, um, our select our check boxes here. They're a little bit bunched up and um, quite tight. One of the things I want to do is actually make these boxes just a little bit bigger. So what we can use in a bootstrap, if you go to the getbootstrap.com website and do a search for form controls, and under sizing, you'll be able to see that there's classes we can apply to change the size of the input boxes. So there's form control small, the default size, and form control LG for making them larger. So if I added that, for example, straight into our classes box on the right hand panel, uh, with our, let's, let's have a look at our full name one, shall we? So if I put form control in here, LG, we get a larger input box. Can see the difference there. I'm going to apply that effect on each one of our check boxes down here. So I'm just going to remove it from our full name box, and then with each of our check boxes, I'm going to add that larger Cool, that's really neat. In this situation, I'm actually just going to increase also the spacing between these input elements here. So um, I've actually nested them inside a row. So at the bottom of that, with the row selected, I'm going to put a class saying MB, which is margin bottom, and then four. Cool, that's looking really neat. Okay. So uh, next thing I'm going to look at is our phone field here. So we've got a field for our full name, phone, and email. And if you look at the email field, you'll notice, and you would have seen this, um, experienced this in other um, forms that you've maybe have created. When you start typing, it says, hey, it's not a valid email address. That is until you start writing things that look like an email address. So we've got the at and the dot com, and it takes away that error or that, that alert. What we can do is we can actually create the same effect on our phone number. So at the moment in this field, I can apply anything. I can write numbers, letters, spaces, symbols, anything. And it doesn't say, hey, that's not right. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some um, <clears throat> types to this field to make it a phone number field. And we're also going to add what are called regular expressions or patterns that limit the, uh, the type of content that can be put in that field. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually look at some of the built-in inputs that we have in blocks. So with our phone field, uh, our phone input selected, on the right-hand panel, we'll see these different types where we can select standard, email, password, number, date, and hidden. Now, you'd think you could select number. The problem is number is not a phone number. Number is a stepper field. So if we go and have a look at this, we get this field where we can, with these arrows, step the numbers up and down and that's not the type of field that we want for our, our phone number field 
So what we're going to do is have a look at some of these documentations from um, Mozilla Docs. And there's an input type that we're going to use called TEL for telephone. Um, Mozilla Docs have some really great things that you can look up. Actually, if we scroll down here, we'll be able to see it's got a big list of the different input types you can have. Um, I like this one here. We can actually create or turn your input box into a color, um, a color well, where someone filling in your form can actually select colors, which is pretty cool. Um, there's all sorts of different things here. The one we were looking at, um, where are we? Is telephone. So we're going to set our type to tell, and uh, we're going to add a pattern to limit our input to digits 0 to 9. And there's lots of types of expressions you can use. We're going to keep ours really simple in this case. So coming back to our blocks, and with our phone um, input selected, make sure it's set to standard, um, your type is set to standard. And down the bottom under custom attributes, we're going to add one called type with a value of tell. Okay, so what we have now is a telephone field. And if we go and view this, you'll find that nothing much appears to have changed. I can still type numbers and letters and symbols, and I'm not being told off. But what this does tell uh, your users on mobile devices, it can do a cool thing by switching the keyboard. So I'm just going to change over to the view of my phone for a moment. And um, as you know, if you're looking at this on devices, say an iPad or a phone, when you select an input box, you get your keyboard come up. And so this is a normal keyboard right here. Um, and when you select an email form, you get the a keyboard that gives you the app sim the at symbol at the bottom. You see the keyboard changes. But now because we've added that type tell to the phone field, when I select the telephone field, our keyboard is going to change to a telephone keyboard. You see that? How awesome is that? So that's really helpful for um, your users when they're using your website. It makes it really simple when they're on devices, they get the right keyboard for the field. It's quite neat. Okay, so that's what we've changed. Now what we want to do is for desktops, of course, we don't get that sort of keyboard. We want to limit the type of input by setting those patterns. So with our um, input, our phone input selected, I'm going to add another attribute down here called pattern. And I'm going to set the pattern for this. So I'm going to put them in square brackets. I'm going to put 0-9, which limits the, the, uh, the digits that can be used, which is 0 to 9. I'm going to put a space to allow people to write spaces. I'm going to put the plus symbol and a hyphen. Now that means that all these, these um, characters can be used in the field. And I'm going to put a plus on the outside of my square brackets to um, mean that they can put in as many numbers as they need to. Okay, if we go and look at this now, if I type some numbers, you can see the numbers there, I can put a space in there. I can put a plus symbol, I can put a hyphen, but when I go to write some numbers or some letters, you can see, whoop, not in the expected format. It's really cool. What happened before is I double spaced and we got a, we got a um, full stop. So now what we have is a working phone number field. And in my country, um, plus 64 is our area code. So what it means is that we can write numbers relative to our country. You can change the expressions to suit what you need there. That's cool. All right. Next thing we're going to look at is our next three fields are our event date, from, and our to. Under our event date, we actually have date built into um, blocks, which is really handy. On the right-hand panel, we can select um, date, and it's going to give us an input field, which is neat. And for some reason, it does play up where occasionally you get, um, it only happens in blocks, it doesn't happen on the browser. So what I might do is actually go to Safari for this one. And so now we have our um, date picker, which is really cool. And you'll see if I go back to my phone and I refresh, we will see our date picker on our phone. Obviously, the way it looks depends on the type of phone you're on. 
I'm on iPhone. Very neat. Okay, the next fields we want to do is um, change these ones here to a time. Um, I should point out there's actually another date one that you can get um, which is called a date time local um, and I'll give you an example of what that looks like um, I might use this box uh, I'll use that box we can add a type here called date time as you could imagine you're going to get a date option and a time and uh, the date time was an option you could use but it's been uh, deprecated and you now have to put date time locale local and now we have this input box which gives us a date selector and a time selector which is kind of cool as well so um, you know so what we want to use though is we don't want to use this one so I'm just going to remove that we want to use if we come back to our docs we want to use one called time and the cool thing about this is we can set also a minimum and maximum time so we're going to set our type to time and then we can set the minimum and maximum time that someone could set that means say for example in this situation we don't want people to be able to do a hire before nine o'clock in the morning and we don't want them to do a hire after five o'clock so in this field here I'm going to set our type to time and we can if you look at the documentations then the custom attribute is min and max and it's in 24 hour time so we're going to set the minimum here to be um, oh let's do eight o'clock eight a.m. and then the max we probably want them to do is we don't want them hiring beyond four o'clock because we close at five o'clock so 24 hour so that's 1600 for four o'clock So we've got the um, minimum maximum hireage time for the beginning of their hire and we're going to do the same here for our two field. So we're going to set the type to time set the minimum um, because we want to do a minimum one hour hire so uh, that's going to be 0900 and a maximum we can go for uh, five o'clock which is a seventeen hundred awesome so now if someone was to set a from time and say they wanted the seven o'clock in the morning they're going to get an alert too low minimum of 8 a.m can be accepted and the same thing if they try to um, To a later time than um, we've set so that's kind of cool right uh, the next thing we want to look at as we come through is uh, we're going to change some of the styling here for our um, check boxes if you can uh, look at our form you'll see that we've set the we've set our the boxes around our input fields but the uh, the check boxes haven't changed and that's because they use a slightly different class so I'm going to go to Safari here and uh, use our inspector and that's going to show us that uh, our checkboxes are using a class called form check input form check input so what we're going to do here is make a class and much like with our other um, form control I'm just going to set the border here you can also set the width if you wanted to make them heavier I'm going to set them to match I'm going to have no radius uh, does the radius actually have an effect no it doesn't can't set the radius um, 
Okay. The other thing I'd like to do here is when we check these boxes, they actually change the color of the tick. So as you can see, uh, by default, there's a blue tick, uh, but it doesn't suit the, the color scheme of the site that we're working on. So what we're going to do is have a look at how we can style those. Again, going back to my inspector, we'll see that it's our form checked input. And under the styles being used here, you'll see here the one where it gets changed to blue. It's called form checked, semicolon checked. So we can actually copy this here. And I'm going to make a class called that and we're going to change the background color. So new class, form checked, input checked. And change our background color. And we're going to make this a dark orange. Let's have a look. Nice. You'll notice that it's still got the black um, back, um, border around there. So what we could do also in this class is that we could change the color of our border to that same color cool that looks great right next thing we are going to style is our submit button I'm going to rename this um, send inquiry and I'm just going to make a really simple button here the black button I don't want this button as big as that Oops. Somehow under normal we missed uh how do you end up with white? Okay, for some reason my um color swatches play up every now and then. Okay. I'm gonna put some spacing there. So under my um element here, making sure that I have form group selected. I'm just going to put some padding. I'm going to use a bootstrap class, which is MB, so margin bottom, and I'm going to set that to four. Brilliant. Well, one thing we actually want to do is we want to style our um, labels here too on our checkboxes. They're not quite right, are they? So we'll come back to Safari. And using our inspector, we'll be able to see that our checkboxes use a class called form check label so we can add that to our class editor here and we can style the text on our checkboxes i'm going to make these um bold nice <clears throat> okay, so uh, what have we got left to check? <clears throat> Excuse me if I'm losing my voice. I'm still fighting off a bug. Okay, so we have our basic form structure now. Uh, I think most of our styling has been done. Um, what we want to do now is style our alerts. So when someone sends an inquiry and they haven't filled in the required fields, we get these warnings. This is required. Now, I don't like these big uh, chunky alerts. Um, they're pretty easy to change, actually, if we go and inspect them. We'll find that they are nestled inside a div called helper block. And then inside that, we actually just have a standard um, bootstrap alert warning alert alert warning and if we come to the bootstrap docs here 
we'll see that this is what's being used here. <clears throat> so we can easily override this and restyle this. And in this case, I'm just going to change these to have some red text without all this padding and coloring. Um, but I don't want to affect our alert warnings um, across the rest of our website. I just want to restrict it and change it in our forms. So I'm going to use uh, the helper block class, the help block class that's here, and then um, override our alert warning. So I'm going to use help help dot help block alert warning. Make a new class. Help block space dot alert warning. Keep our spaces intact. And um, let's just have a look here. So as you see, I use the inspector a lot to find the classes I want to style, these default elements. And if we look at the alert warning um, class, we'll see here that the things that we can change or override um, a color, background color, and border color. So we want to change those elements. Um, we're going to change our color to red. We're going to uh, get rid of our background and we're going to get rid of our border. And so we're going to see something more like that when uh, we've applied our class. So our background. All I'm going to do actually to set it as transparent is I'm going to set the color and then remove it. Uh, what else do we need to change? Background, border color and color. So I'm going to do the same thing for our borders. Uh, we can actually set the width to zero here. <clears throat> and the color that we're going to use for our font. I'm going to set that to red. And of course, uh, we have these options here where you can style the text. And I might do capitals. So if we come back to our browser, and we send inquiry, we now get our warnings looking a little bit different. We want to change some of this padding that's around here though too. So it's actually sitting on uh, our alert, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, so um, because if we look at our bootstrap classes, when, we, when you set an alert, you apply two classes. One is alert, and then the other one is related to the type of alert. So you're either putting alert primary, alert secondary. So now we want to change the padding on our alert class. So once again, I'm going to target the help block. And then alert. Keep our spaces. I'm going to set what we have here. Our padding. There's a margin top as well. Put a radius. I'm going to change our padding to zero. Actually, I'm going to even change the text. I'm going to remove the capitals. I don't like that. So we're going to set our um, padding to zero. So we're going to do on that one. I'm going to come back to the alert warning and I'm going to change our text. I'm going to remove that capitals. Refresh the page. Nice. I kind of like this look better. Now, one of the things that we need to change also is uh, the different warning that we get when we put the wrong email address in. Oh, sorry, the wrong phone number in. So we come to our phone number field. If someone makes a mistake here. <clears throat> we can actually edit this text that we see here. Now, this option is a little bit different from the ones that you see in the in blocks on the side panel. The required message is not what's being displayed here. It's a different message. And if we use our inspector, We're going to see what the name of that attribute is here. So it's called data validation pattern message. And we use that, and it has a note here, to override that text. 
we just need to set an attribute called data validation pattern message. It's a long one, but because we're influencing the message of when the pattern's wrong, that's what we're going to do. So what was it called? Data validation pattern message. It's a long one. So we're going to add with our phone number selected, add another custom attribute, data pattern So I'm going to put a message, only phone numbers, please. Let's have a look. If I get that attribute right, we should get a different message. Data validation pattern message. <clears throat> data pattern. Oh, data validation pattern. <laughs> I'm confusing myself. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Data validation pattern message. Okay, I should get that right way around, shouldn't I? Whoops, there we go, our new message. Whoops, only phone numbers allowed, please. <laughs> so that's kind of cool now. All right. So there we have our uh, basic form. The only thing to do is to actually make sure and go through um, and name all of our fields. Um, and we do that because these names are going to be what is used in the email that gets sent to you. So for a full name here, I'm just going to keep that ID as name. Under phone, better change that to phone, email, Okay, the only thing really left to do is uh, to uh, make sure that we've put in all our details for our form, uh, which you can do when you have your form selected, put your send to and from emails. And um, yeah, that's basically it. That's some um, creating forms with some extra features. Have a look what it looks like on my phone. Obviously you can change some of the styling for the smaller breakpoints. And um, our number system, number keypad, which is really cool. Okay, that's it. If you've got any questions, uh, put some messages down below. Okay, have a fantastic day.